You fellow duplicate, welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Today we're going to take a look at the Ice Maker, a new piece of equipment that they're introducing to the game. We're going to see just how many DTUs that bad boy can delete. If it can delete, is it self-cooling? questions like that. Now we're also going to take a look at this new piece of equipment that they just introduced into the game in this last little patch here. This thing is called the ore dumper. So this ore dump station right here is essentially like a bottle emptier for storage bins right there. It works on an automation signal. It consumes a little bit of power. And guess what? If you put stuff in it, it can dump it off to the side. Boom. Just like that. We don't have to empty storage bins, open doors, drop stuff down. Nope. We can now use a single pin machine for that, that's the ore dump station. So you can see in my arrangement here, I have an ice machine over here that's going to be, uh, the, the duplicates are going to run over to the pitcher pump, put it into the ice machine, it's going to make some ice. I have an auto sweeper that's going to drop it into the ore dump station, just like this, and then it dumps it into the puddle of water. So the first question you're probably asking, is this thing self-cooling? Well, see Merck here, Merck just picked up some water. This water is at 57.3 degrees Celsius, and it goes inside of here at that temperature, okay? And then that thing is going to work to bring the temperature of that 50 kilograms of water all the way down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. So I already I went ahead and recorded this and it's basically just timed it out. <laughs> so it, this was from 76 degrees Celsius. Now using a tool called Oxygen Not Included Assistant, this is the cooling calculator, I put in the original temperature and then the target temperature that it reached and then the amount of mass that was in there, right? Made sure I picked the correct element, and then the time that it took to cool that, which was 85 seconds. With all of that information in there, I was able to figure out that the ice machine cools at a rate of around 237,000 duplicate thermal units per second. In case you're wondering, that is as powerful as 19.8 Weeswarts, or three thermal nullifiers. So yeah. The ice machine is pretty cool. So is it self-cooling? Well, the ice machine puts out heat at 2,500 duplicate thermal units. So yes, it is self-cooling. Like 100 to 1. <laughs> so what does this mean for a puddle of water? Well, first things first. If we have, let's say, oh, that is not what I wanted to do. So what does this mean for a puddle of water? Well, in one tile of water, you can have 1,000 kilograms of water, depending on where it is. I mean, there's, there's, they kind of overpressurize and underpressurize depending on how deep it is, but. All right, so here we have water. We have 1,000 kilograms inside of it. And then we have the initial temperature, which I've set to 95. We want to bring it down to five degrees, nice and cold. Maybe we're going to use that to cool our base or something like that or whatever. And then we set this for a cycle, one single cycle right there. We now know that it is 626,000 DTUs. So by that math, it would take more than one ice machine in order to do that right there. So if we increase the set temperature so that we end up with uh, three thermal nullifiers there, or right around 200 and something thousand, there we have it. We could go from 95 degrees to 60 degrees in one cycle. So is it massively powerful? No, but it is quite powerful, especially when you consider that it takes 240 watts to run. And then it takes some other piece of equipment to kind of automate the whole thing as far as where it's dropping and whatnot. But, I, you know, it gives us a really good method if we want to take something like water and cool it back down. But the thing is, the thing is it does require a duplicate to feed water into the ice machine so you are using up a duplicate's time in order to run this piece of machinery in order to cool down water to a lower temperature and get all of that extra cooling out of the ice machine so there's definitely cost to this thing for deleting a whole bunch of heat now one of the things we try to keep cool is something like a cool steam vent right here so let's say we have an eruption cycle 168 and it's 299 seconds just kind of average numbers right um, what we can essentially see right down here based on the calculators again from the oxygen not included assistant geyser calculator is that the amount of heat that's being put into this area while it's erupting is a equivalent more or less equivalent to what we have cooling capacity inside of the ice machine but when you take that and you extend it out per cycle 
we can actually keep that geyser oh, cool or if we actually go for the entire active cycle you know where it's actually just running and then it's dormant for a while then we can we can definitely keep a cool steam vent cool so that it, we don't have to worry about it overheating and over pressurizing we just have to pump the water out once we get it so let's go ahead and set up one of those we're going to set up a cool steam vent we're going to put an ice machine in there see how that works we're also going to do another one which is using an ore dump station uh, to transport regolith from the surface down to a puddle of water so that we can try to keep this stuff up here which is very very hot uh, reasonably cool so that we can use it in other spots in our base you know without it potentially introducing a bunch of heat that we don't want all right so here's a cool steam vent there we go we'll clear the selection on that one do the research all right so if i look at this steam vent you can see the numbers that i have we have steam numbers i'm just going to plug these into the calculator over here so that's 143 every 308 the active cycle is 94.4 every 166. And the output is 4624.5. There we go. So filling this out, we now know what I have going on here. So, so you can see here over its entire period of 166 cycles, this thing is going to produce 122 tiles worth of water. <laughs> or 121 kilograms. That's uh, pretty significant. But at the same time, it's less than what we should be able to, you know, it's less heat than we should have to deal with. So we should be able to keep this cool with an ice machine. Okay, so here's the setup. You can see that we have a cool steam vent and it is pumping out the heat. <laughs> and the temperature is quite hot inside of there. Luckily, fane has got this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some water. We'll put it in the ice machine. Oops, I gotta change some of these materials here. There, make that thing out of insulation. Oh, this this idea is not working. Oh boy. Now I made this out of steel because, well, it's hot. I made the pitcher pump out of insulation in hopes that it doesn't freeze. You can see the ice fall out of this machine and it's going to warm up and try to keep this cool down here. So if we take a look at the temperature down there. That's at 93 degrees Celsius. So it's relatively hot. This is gonna drive me nuts. Now, we're never really be ever introduced to a steam like this, unless it already has a bunch in there. So let's go ahead and just bring in a bunch of steam right there. It's going to be kind of hot, 126 degrees. But that'll introduce some extra heat to this whole thing. Give it a little bit more accurate of a test. This is weird. Let's not worry about that. Just kind of do that number. We'll call it good. No, don't worry about that. Now, if there's one thing I found when dealing with like a cool steam vent here, is that you really do want to have a thermal shift plate down there. Okay, so what these temperature shift plates are doing here is that it allows the energy from the water and the steam to like transfer a whole lot faster here. So that makes a big, big difference. I'm gonna go ahead and pump in a bunch more steam here, see if we can heat up the water down there to a certain level. There we go, it's up to 90. We should be able to get it a little bit higher. 97. Okay, so the water down here is at 98 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm going to let this run for a while. Let's see just how, how cool things get inside of here. There's a fair amount of steam, um, so it's going to take a little while. But the other thing that we want to try to cool down here is going to be the regolith. So I'm going to put a transit tube all the way up here to the to like a space station or whatever. And then we'll put an ore dumper way up here, and that's where we're going to have some regolith and we're going to drop that back down into like a, a cooling puddle. Okay, so up here I have a pitcher pump that goes into kind of a puddle of water down here. We have the ice machine right next to this, an auto sweeper that's going to go back and forth, and then an ore dumping station. And because I probably need it, I'll need a transit tube access point because I can't get to it otherwise. <laughs> now the temperature of this water right now is at 100 degrees Celsius. So it's very, very close to turning into steam. And what I want to do here is use a thermal sensor to run an automation signal up to the ore dumper that's way, 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 way up here. And then, obviously, because this is way up here in space, uh, I don't want to just continuously vent stuff into space. So I'm going to set this 
right here up on a clock sensor so that it only becomes active for a very short amount of time at the beginning of the cycle, just enough to drop the ore through. But I'm only gonna drop it if this is below 80 degrees Celsius or something like that. So this is going to be set to a filtration medium. There we go, obviously, we just want regolith up there. So meanwhile, down here in our cool steam vent experiment, what we can see is that we are condensing the steam down. Matter of fact, it's moving quite quickly. We had 15 kilograms of steam, remember all that? Well, that's no longer there. And we are venting a little bit of heat over here. But if you take a look at the water, look at that. It's now down to 89 degrees Celsius. So not bad. Okay, one thing I'm going to do here is we're going to flip this to a transit tube access point there. And then I'm going to get rid of that door. Yeah, there we go. So this puddle up here is still taking a little while to get down to temperature. See, it's at 85 degrees Celsius. Oh, there we go. It dropped down low enough. So that sent the automation signal to this guy up here. What if I say sweep that? Come on, buddies. There you go, Emily's got it. And you can see this thing is now dropping um, all sorts of regolith right down here. Look at that. Thing is, it's building up on top of this door. So that's 2,600 kilograms. Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the cycle. This thing should open up. Come on, you can do it. And it's going to drop this regolith all the way down. Whoop, there it goes. Falling, falling, falling. Now let's see what happens once it hits this area right down here. Well, the regolith is cooling down. We see that's at 134 now. And yeah, yeah, that is working. Another way to do this exact same thing would be to use the some of the new shipping tools, such as a conveyor loader, uh, the conveyor rail, and then maybe a shutoff at one point right up here, and then a, an ore dropper just like that and say, okay, well, we can convey the regolith up to this point, and then if it's available, we allow it to flow past to the ore dropper. That does require a little bit more materials than uh, an ore dropper like this. But, you know, different machine, different use. The ore dropper is kind of a, maybe also useful for feeding things like hatches and whatnot if you just kind of want to throw stuff in a certain spot. So one, one additional thought might be to take this and, and take the a mass and kind of divide it out into several storage containers, maybe something like this, right? For where you just put 50 kilograms inside of it so that the temperature drops very quickly and then you ship it out or whatever after that. I mean, there's a ton more we can do with that. So it just opens up a lot more, uh, many more opportunities. So if we take a look back at the cool steam vent over here, we should see that the temperature keeps dropping. We're down to 84 degrees Celsius on that guy. It keeps building up more and more water, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, given enough time, this thing will stay cool. Okay, so I'm going to let this run for a little while. I'll come back later and we'll see what these results are like. All right, in case you weren't aware of it, one of the things that I've been getting into more here recently is live streaming. And I've been doing a lot of that over there on Twitch. If you're looking for a way to help support this channel and you have Amazon Prime and you're not following anybody else, then you do have a free subscription that you could apply to this channel. And that would actually go to help financially support what I'm doing here on YouTube and starting to do more on Twitch. Thanks for watching and thanks so much for your support, guys. Absolutely awesome. All right, so it's been about 20 cycles or so, and what we can see over here in this cool steam vent experiment is that the temperature has dropped down to 75 degrees Celsius. So we're bringing in quite a bit of water, so it just takes longer to keep cooling things down. The point is that it is cooling, and it is keeping the, the cool steam vent cold enough so that everything condenses. It doesn't keep getting hotter and hotter and we just end up with a mountain of steam in there. So this does work. Is it producing super, super cold water? Well, no, not, not right off the bat. And it does take a fair amount of effort of going back and forth. One of the other things I noticed in the other experiment up here is that because this has a uh, pitcher pump and whatnot, uh, it sucked all the water out of here and it's just turned into ice. So I have 300 and uh, so I have 3,350 kilograms of ice down there and then a very small puddle of water. So that arrangement didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. So let's try this a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and try to put some more regolith in there, maybe some more iron. 
There we go. So that's dropping down. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this open the entire cycle so we see what happens down here. And what we should see is that some crazy things are going to happen with the temperatures. So we've got a whole bunch of regolith in there at fairly high temperature. It's at 85 degrees Celsius. It definitely did cool down in this area. The ice is staying super cold. The water is becoming very confused. Hmm. Ooh, there we go. Now you dropped the iron in there. That's going to heat things up. So the thing is, even though we are dropping all of this material down there, it is staying cool and the temperature is is working out. It's not like we've just suddenly dropped hundreds and hundreds of degrees of hot stuff in here and it's just melted everything or burned everything. No, I mean, it, it, it works, but I don't think this is quite the arrangement you might want to use. There's probably a better way to do this. This makes me think if we use the conveyor rail and we have like a big body of water here that's kept cold, and the water cannot find its way out that we could then use a shutoff in order to kind of moderate the temperature so that things go in there they stay in there for a little while and then they move on and that is how we cool something like ore that could be coming from space and we need to use it in the lower part of our base but then again now that we have the ice maker machine and we can kind of work that thing uh, to our advantage maybe keeping the base cool in the first place is going to be less of a challenge but you can see here you know i mean even even in this arrangement here uh, the temperature still finds a way to make its way out and you gotta still have to deal with it so so there you have it that's the ice machine and the ore dump station now these are still in development so the actual numbers and and what's going on there may change by the time that it actually releases but it has been updated uh, a couple times since the patch was first released so things might continue to change but this also might be how they're how they want it to be so i don't know if these numbers are going to stick but for right now this is where it's at and i think it's i think it's a cool way to combat the the all the problems we have with heat in this game so that's pretty neat next up i'm going to try to figure out how to automate this steam turbine i've run through it twice and then a patch blew it all up so we're gonna eventually i'm gonna get that thing figured out and make a video on that so if that looks like something for you or maybe you just like this channel maybe consider hitting that subscribe button thanks for watching guys have a great day stay awesome peace brothgar out